say something? What are you, coward? Big man. Now, four fugitives who've earned their 15 seconds of shame. in Charleston, South Carolina, say Jade Young, an accused drug dealer, shot a man to death. Young goes by the nickname New York. He has ties to the Georgia area and could be hiding there tonight. Sucha Singh is accused of stabbing his wife to death in Dallas just because she asked him for a divorce. Singh may be hiding out in New York or Toronto, but I know he can't hide from you. Police say Juan Antonio Pena shot a man to death after an argument at a bar in Hartford, Connecticut. Pena may be staying in motels in New York, Georgia, or Tennessee. He goes by the nickname Tone. A Tennessee jury convicted Kevin Cooper on child porn charges. But he skipped town before serving his sentence. He may be surfing in California or Mexico with his constant companion, a chihuahua. That they've had their 15 seconds of shame you know what to do if you've seen any of these fugitives call our hotline at 1-800-CRIME-TV what happens when a case seems unsolvable the folder gets put in a file and stored away it becomes a cold case sometimes they're forgotten but often there's a cop who won't give up trying to solve it we believe there's always hope and that's why we're introducing a new feature the cold cases. Vanessa died with her eyes open. Obviously, she knew she was going to die. She fought her attacker, and it, when it was a violent death, Paula Hamill is no stranger to gruesome crime scenes. This experienced detective has solved crimes of anger and passion and everything in between, including a teenage murderer who fled to Israel after butchering a friend in his garage. I've been working in the Major Crimes Division uh, investigating homicides here in Montgomery County since 1993. And, of course, um, since that time, I've had five kids. With a car seat in her sedan, she catches 3 a.m. murders and balances it with 2 a.m. feedings. Her heart is never far from view, even in her office, where her children's drawings are tacked up between forensic reports. From the time that she was stabbed. The stabbing death of Vanessa Sosin haunts her. The answer just beyond her grasp. The more information Paula Hamill digs up, the more mysterious it all seems. First witness was a mailman finishing his Saturday route in Rockville, Maryland, when he saw something odd. It was a cold afternoon. He hadn't seen anybody all day, and it caught his attention that he saw somebody leaving the front of Vanessa's consignment shop here. Shortly after that, he saw smoke coming from the front windows. To the firefighter's horror, the young, beautiful store owner lay dead on a blood-stained floor in the back bathroom. Vanessa suffered 14 stab and cutting wounds. There was, only, there was one major stab wound to like her right carotid artery. Detective Hamill took us back into the crime scene. Three years later, it's still empty, still bloody, eerily preserved as though the murder happened yesterday. When we first got here, it was a pretty overwhelming uh, crime scene. We walked in, there was smoke still every place. There was uh, parts of the building that were still smoldering. The firemen were here working. Vanessa was covered with blood. The floor, the hot water heater, the door. Patterns in the blood can reveal many secrets. Detective Hamill brought in Dr. Bill Vosberg, a blood spatter expert, to try and decipher what took place. Vanessa is escorted back into this bathroom at knife point with a knife to her throat, all the way back into the toilet area here. The confrontation occurs at standing height. Her throat is slashed. 
the knife is swung and arterial gushing of blood occurs against the walls. She falls to her knees, tries to escape this room, swipes at kneeling height against the door frame, crashes into the hot water heater towards the corner here, and then falls back onto the floor in the final death position with her head near the swinging door to that area where a final uh, strike against the neck is done with the knife. But when the door was opened and the assailant exited, there's one swipe pattern on one side of the door frame here. Okay. And what I noted of significance there was that it's pretty high up and it's most likely an elbow mark and it's at about the same height that my elbow would leave and I'm six foot two. Okay, so based on what we know right now, we really can't rule out or in the possibility that the suspect involved here was a male or a female. Right, we know we're dealing with a taller individual. And that's about as far as you can go from the blood spatter analysis. What is evident to the naked eye? The suspect came in prepared to burn the place down. Iris, the detection dog, found a melted gas can, a funnel, one rubber glove, and a number of soda and water bottles full of a gas and oil mixture, a fuel used for small engines like lawnmowers. Fire investigator Brian Anderson doesn't believe the suspect was a professional arsonist. But they didn't understand enough that to get the fire to trail back to where the body was, that they needed to have a continuous ignitable liquid trailer back to that point. Okay, so the person had a... The suspect had a basic knowledge of fire and how they work, but not an advanced knowledge. There were other witnesses. Paula Hamill interviewed a customer in the shop who remembered seeing a tall black person come in with two shopping bags full of clothes. One, a Panera Bread shopping bag. She believed it was a female with a large black kind of puffy coat and a hat, and the hair was kind of tucked up inside. The Panera bag was found dumped behind the building next door. It contains clothing of both a man and a woman. The clothes were used. They smelled like gasoline. The police lab tested the clothes, the shopping bags, and the bottles for DNA. We were able to recover DNA from the swoopings of those bottle mouths and caps. Unfortunately, the DNA that we recovered is both of a male and a female. Then there's what's missing from the scene itself any sign of a robbery. Money and jewelry in Vanessa's Mercedes remain, though a mink coat is unaccounted for. Also missing, a murder weapon, or fingerprints, or any blood from the suspect. A vicious personal murder, a foiled attempt at burning her body. Was there something in Vanessa's life that ultimately led to her violent death? Vanessa was a kind person, very trusting. She was funny, she was lovable. Vanessa was a beloved daughter and sister, a smart and successful businesswoman. She mentored young girls in a group home. I think Vanessa left the world a better place than before. I think she left the world, but the world was a better place for her having been here. When Vanessa was 35, she met Cliff Sosen on the internet. He says she was the love of his life. And two years later, they were married. Vanessa and Cliff had a beautiful, like a fairy tale wedding. They had a beautiful wedding. Cliff was very loving to me. He was very kind. He and Denise got along fine. We just all got along wonderful. Cliff bought Vanessa diamonds, shoes, furs, and fancy cars. He helped her realize her dream of opening her own business a resale shop that specialized in designer clothes. She called it in style. But her mother worried about security in the little store because Vanessa was often alone. She trusted people too much. She, she'd always say, you know, who would want to hurt me? No one would want to hurt me. It is a detail among hundreds of little things that have nagged her family since the murder including how perfect Vanessa's marriage really was. Vanessa talked to me on a Tuesday before she died, and she told me that Cliff had spoken to her about getting a divorce, and he wanted her to live in the house, not move out, because he didn't want anyone to know that they were divorced. 
But three months after the murder, Cliff joined the family on what would have been Vanessa's 40th birthday, pleading for information. As the days go by, one at a time, I pray you'd communicate who did this crime. But still the hurt never seems to come to an end. I miss you, my love. I will love you always. That public appearance sparked a tip. A woman saw him on TV and told cops she was dating him. Through the investigation, through the search warrants that we did on the internet accounts, we found that Mr. Sosen was active in online, several online dating services where he was meeting women. Police discovered he even had a date scheduled the night Vanessa was killed. He wasn't the person that Vanessa thought he was. Cliff hasn't cooperated with the police since, claiming that they are targeting him unfairly. Paula Hamill believes he's a cat, but not necessarily a killer. Certainly, you know, Vanessa's husband has been dis had been dishonest with with me in the investigation from the beginning, I have no reason to believe that he was responsible in any way for his wife's death. Cliff Sosen has a strong alibi for the afternoon of Vanessa's death. So police are wondering, could Vanessa's attacker have been a jealous girlfriend Cliff met on the internet? Since the murder, Cliff remarried and divorced, saying the trauma of Vanessa's death doomed his attempt at a fresh start, but he continues to shop online for the new love of his life on an internet dating service. But Vanessa's mother cannot move on until she finds justice for her daughter. I'm gonna keep working until I don't have any more breath in my body. But this is my child, my baby, and I'm not giving up. family broken by tragedy and a case that's turned cold. It is a mother of five who bears the responsibility for finding her killer. She was a very loving person, a nice person, somebody who was trusted. And so I feel that it's important for me on a personal level and on a professional level to find the person that's responsible for killing Vanessa. Stories like that absolutely break my heart. So let's do what we do best and put some tips together that can finally help solve this mystery. If you know anything that can help us find out who killed Vanessa Sosa, do the right thing. Call our hotline at 1-800-CRIME-TV. That's 1-800-274-6388. I know somebody knows something about this murder, and I guarantee you that you can remain anonymous. If you want to go over these clues again, go to our website, amw.com. Don't forget you can leave your tip there, too. Now, there's a lot more coming up, so stay with us.